Hi everybody, Brian from Stita.com, here today to answer a question that we get all the time. How to properly measure the ride height of your vehicle. Taking this measurement is actually really straightforward. And one of the first things that you need to do is air up all four tires. Make sure that you've got the tire pressure set to where they need to be for your specific vehicle. The next thing is find the center cap on the wheel. We know you know where the center cap is because we're certain you have fancy wheels on your truck or car, just like this one. We're going to go to the center of the center cap. Now this means that you can take a measurement of the diameter of the wheel if you really technically have to find absolutely down to the 32nd of an inch where that center cap is or the center of the center cap. Realistically, you don't have to get that specific and we'll cover that more here in a little bit. And you're going to grab your trusty tape measure. You're simply going to measure from the center of the center cap to the center of the top of the fender arch. And that's going to be your measurement. On this particular Mustang, we came in at 14.75 inches, which is exactly what Steeda suggested for these springs. You're still here. All right, so we know that there's reasons why you're checking the ride height of your vehicle. One of the most common reasons is because you've installed new springs. If it's a truck and you're lifting it some, or if it's a car and you're lowering it some, you want to know that whatever the manufacturer specified for lowering or lift is in fact where you're at. The other reason might be you might see inconsistencies in the four corners. Let's start with the springs first. If you can, find out from the manufacturer exactly what the springs are supposed to set the car or truck to, whether they're raising it or lowering it. Same thing with a lift kit. Now the next thing to check is, were they installed correctly? This sounds really silly, especially as you're going through from corner to corner, but the reality is no matter how experienced some of these shops are, or even customers installing it, we've all had a bad day. We've all made a mistake. We are human, in fact. So, this means that there could be a mistake there. It's a great way to check that. One of the frequent mistakes is either putting the wrong springs at the wrong end of the vehicle or simply mounting them upside down. And keep in mind, manufacturer part numbers don't always dictate the orientation of the springs. Another thing to check is the control arm bushings. Did you loosen the bolts at the pivot points of the lower control arms and even the upper control arms when you set the car back down to static ride height? This means the height that it's sitting at right now, neutral, on the ground, and level. If you didn't loosen those bolts, there's a chance that the bushings may be preloaded and creating an artificial ride height. This can also create a difference side to side and even corner to corner. Now something else that's also important to keep in mind is what did you do with the sway bars? On a performance car like this, with adjustable sway bar end links, by adjusting each of the four corners, if you have coilovers, this can also create spring tension against the sway bar. Did you disconnect the end link to make sure that the car is sitting level side to side, front and rear? That's really important. So again, things to check. Keep these things in mind as you're going through and checking for ride height issues. Another very important consideration to keep in mind when checking ride height is, did you change the struts and shocks on the vehicle when you did the springs? Or did you simply change just one or the other? This is important because there's two main types of struts and shocks on the market. A monotube high pressure design like Bilstein utilizes, it was very well known for utilizing, as well as twin tube low pressure design, most commonly used by Kony. Again, both extremely reputable companies. Neither one is right or wrong. Just simply put, a high pressure design will sometimes create a little bit of artificial ride height. This means that because it is a higher pressure monotube, it may bump up the ride height by an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch. Likewise, as a twin tube setup, being a low pressure design, will not have any preload against the spring. This means that the ride height might be an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch lower than the specified lowering amount. What we're getting at here is don't get too crazy about the finite little differences from corner to corner. The auto manufacturers specify acceptable differences in ride height of up to one quarter inch corner to corner and side to side for cars and up to one half inch for trucks. This is to allow room or tolerance to accommodate variances in the manufacturing process as each individual part is cast, stamped, or welded, and then as each vehicle is built on the assembly line. So before you go running to the manufacturer of the aftermarket springs or struts and shocks that you've installed, try to get a before measurement and come back at it. Now the other thing that probably is bothering you is your own mind. 
you're getting a little bit goofy. In all honesty, I mean this in a little bit of joking and a little bit of seriousness. You're getting a little bit goofy and obsessed from corner to corner. The reality is there will be slight variances. So why is ride height important to you? All these manufacturers that are creating performance springs, lift kits, lowering springs, racing springs, whatever it may be, and again, whether you're replacing the struts and shocks and springs or just one or the other, it's important to note that the OE manufacturer of the vehicle specified specific geometries to the suspension. This is the most efficient and effective way that it's going to work. Lower a car too much, it's not going to drive well. You're gonna lose in some of that turn and aspect, some of the performance and feel out of it, as well as suspension travel. Raise a truck too much, much the same thing. The steering's gonna go the opposite way and be extremely vague, as well as having too much suspension travel for the shocks and struts, meaning that they simply don't have enough rebound level to them. You go off road, you're gonna know this right away. So it's very important to fall and get your vehicle set up right within these specifications. And that's why we're here measuring this. Now something to keep in mind, we took the measurement while the car is sitting still or at its static stance or ride height. This is important to keep in mind because you cannot measure the dynamic ride height. And the dynamic ride height is when you're driving the car, when you're going down the road. Because we all know that no road, no terrain for that matter, is perfectly level. You're going to have suspension movements, whether it be compression or jounce and rebound when it com comes back down. And in order for the suspension to do this, it needs to have enough room to travel upward and enough room to travel back downward. So here we are talking about this ride height thing again and things to check. You've heard the term bump stop or jounce bumpers. These are literally items to keep the car from bottoming out or the truck from bottoming out one suspension component to another, from bottoming out the internals of your struts and shocks to keeping the axle and tire from rubbing the tops of the fenders or again, the sheet metal on the outside of the car. Ride height is extremely important from a static and a dynamic standpoint. So here we are coming back. We appreciate you guys watching. If you have questions about how to set it up and how to properly measure it, definitely post them below. If you'd like to learn more about Steeda, visit us at steeda.com or follow us on social media. Because great is never good enough and fast is never fast enough, we're gonna keep producing these videos. Thank you for watching and have a great day.